a visitor but not a stranger. He is our staff in the uh, Department of Water Resources, but he has been away to Saudi Arabia for how many years? Five years now. For five years now. He is heading a, a, three depart a, a department with three companies. Civil engineering, mechanical, and uh, chemical. And chemical engineering in Saudi Arabia. I happen to know him because of his interest in library services. While in Saudi Arabia, like many of us who studied outside, you are always thinking of how do you improve services in Nigeria. And uh, he came across a lot of services that is of benefit to library profession. He took the time to go into, I mean, to check our website while in Saudi Arabia, and he realized certain things are missing. Thereafter, he sent an email to a contact report, mm -hmm. and he was giving my phone number, which he gladly um, called me to discuss. So we had a very lengthy discussion a couple of months ago. He is now on holidays. Because of his interest in libraries, he finds time to check me here three times on three occasions. I was not around, so yesterday he got all of me in the department. That shows the interest and the commitment he has to library services. So immediately after we met yesterday, I was like, why don't you come and share some of your experiences and expertise? Not something too elaborate. And if it were somebody who would say, no, the time is too short. Mm -hmm. But he gladly accepted. We are not going to take too much of his time because he has an engagement by 10 a.m. So we want him to just share knowledge. If you have questions, observations, and uh, we need to know more about certain things, we, we, we talk at the time permit. Otherwise, I'm sure he wouldn't mind leaving his contact number for us to contact him at any time. So I'm happy to introduce to Salo the command here with you. Okay. You are welcome. Thank you. I think let me move forward. Uh, good morning, everyone, the University Liberian, the various heads and uh, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning once again. Uh, as the University Liberian has rightly introduced, I just want to share my experience library utilization as I experienced it, okay? I'm not a library scientist. <laughs> My profession, just as he mentioned, is water resource and environmental engineering. But being away for my PhD at Kimfad University of Petroleum and Minerals, and uh, having studied for three years for my PhD, out of which two years are dedicated to coursework. Taking courses, just like undergraduate student, assignment, you know, seminars and other stuff. We have to make use of the library. And uh, we came across a lot of innovative ideas which we feel there is need to stand this morning and just rub minds and share some ideas. Who knows, maybe in some, you know, we may have to adopt certain of, or some of these ideas that we may have to share, okay? So after that, I, just like he rightly mentioned, I am also teaching over there as an assistant professor. So I have some knowledge or an idea about how the, you know, the library operates. And uh, we feel there is need for information sharing, which is like one of the cardinal objectives of a library, okay? So the presentation outline I have, I have seminars on library services, e-resources, user friendliness, roles of teaching and research assistance. This I will stick to. First one, seminars on library services. During my stay over there, I came to realize that almost every semester, the deanship of library affairs, because there is a separate, you know, like a faculty, it has its own dean, just like here, you know, we have the University of Liberia. So they operate, or they organize, seminars every semester in which 
all the university members will be invited, both students and faculty members or lecturers. Okay? And these seminars have broad scope. They could be with something related to the library usage, with respect to maybe a particular database which they subscribe, or something having to do with academic integrity and you know, various areas which are very, very important for the you know, life of a student or lecturer that will help him in one way or the other. So for that reason, I just came up with some topics to expatiate and uh, explain the need for some of these uh, seminars to be organized. Although I think before I left, I was of the view that I think the library sometimes organize some of these seminars. But nevertheless, if it will be like something like routine, be it every semester or every year, something in particular, you know, in which the general public will be invited, all the university inhabitants. I think that will go a long way to you know, disseminate some new ideas, some information that may be of importance you know, to the lecturers and the students alike. One of them is like use of Science Direct and other databases for students and lecturers. I know the university subscribed, sorry, the library has subscribed to Science Direct, but unfortunately last year when I was here, I was uh, organizing a workshop for the postgraduate student and the lecturers. Some do not even know what is Science Direct, let alone know how to explore it or use it. And that I was really taken aback because I can only imagine how a postgraduate student or a research student can thrive without knowing you know, strong or standard databases like Science Direct, which is like a companion of a lot of high impact quality standard journals. So some do, are not even aware that our library has subscribed to the database. They don't even know anything like Science Direct, let alone know how to use it. So if, let's say, just as an advice, maybe the library can take it upon itself that maybe every semester or at least every year, it will invite all you know, the general public to a seminar where you know, the science direct will be introduced, how to use it and the subscription, you know, the password or whatever it is. You know, I think that will go a long way to you know, create some awareness among the postgraduate and even the undergraduate students, even the lecturers as well not only the, the students, the lecturers alike. Yeah, but another thing which is also challenging is the way we disseminate or we invite the general public for maybe a seminar or whatever it is. We still adopt you know, the traditional way of maybe placing information in hard copies, you know, which nowadays with the uh, introduction or the uh, technological age, Someone may never read any poster he see on the notice board. We have the ABU portal. We have our emails, addresses at abu.edu.ng. I think it will do a lot of good if maybe the library in conjunction with the ICT, let's say establish that every student must have a university email address, as well as staff members, lecturers and non-academic staff so that if there is any information that needs to be passed across, instead of the university bulletin that we normally see around, we can also post it via the emails. And that will you know, help a lot in disseminating information very fast to all and sundry. But the traditional way of having the university bulletin, some may never read any notice on the notice board. Yet, that notice may be very important to him. So if we can try to like, move away from the traditional way and incorporate the electronic one, it will really help in conscientizing and inviting much more audience to our programs, seminars, and other stuff. Now, the next one is, for instance, use of end note citation manager. Just like I mentioned, I'm just like, trying to cite some examples of topics in which the library can now like take upon itself to organize some seminars, be it every semester or once in a year. And that will really show how active the library, although I know they do organize, but just like a suggestion, some things that will be important to the students and lecturers alike. 
like end not citation manager it is a reference manager in which because more or less you know when you attain any uh, defense be it msc or phd or undergraduate you will hear this word that number of references cited but not listed listed but not cited because normally we use the manual way okay so 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 comma abc 1990 but at the end, we may forget to go and put the full path of that particular reference. How do we avoid that? We avoid that using the citation manager, in which we gather all our references in the software. And then at any point in time we insert in the text, it will automatically create the full path at the end of the uh, document as reference. So that issue of cited, not referenced, referenced but not cited, will be eliminated or can only be eliminated using the citation manager. There are many of them. EndNote is just one of the most popular amongst them. There are many of them. So this can be like one of the seminars in which it can be organized, you know, to invite all to come and listen, to come and learn how to use the software. Okay? Then there is another one which is very important, the ISI journals. ISI is named, the full path is information for scientific information. Nowadays, you know, for the promotion of the academic staff, they, are, they need to provide, you know, articles. They need to write articles in journals, okay? Initially, normally, the articles can be from local journals, but now we have gone ahead, we look for, let's say, Elsevier journals, Elsevier journals. But, you know, the general name for standard journals worldwide is the ISI or Thomson Reuters journals. They are a group of journals that, you know, satisfy certain criteria for them to be included as ISI journals. Their quality is the highest. Almost all science direct journals are ISI indexed. And also some of Springer journals, some of them, but science direct, almost all they are ISI indexed. And uh, you get the best research from these journal articles, the best research in whichever area. Although there may be maybe the social science, the sciences, and other stuff. And each journal has what is called an impact factor. What is an impact factor? Here we do research, we write in journals, maybe the local journals, in which it even does not have any presence online. Nobody will see the article online, let alone use it. We only have it in hard copies, placed in our libraries, except someone is physically present here. So the visibility of your research will be so much limited. But when you have something online in high quality journal, the impact it will have in the research area will be very great. And that is determined by what is called the impact factor. Based on the number of citations of certain articles in a given year, the number of citations and the number of articles given, you have what is called impact factor. Some are having impact factor less than one, some one, two, three, up to 30 something, even 50 something. So that shows like the relative significance of your research. If you publish in high impact factor journals, it means that your research is really, you know, world standard. And uh, that has a lot of benefits, a lot of benefits. You can have a lot of collaborators worldwide because of a very good article that you have written in a high impact factor journal. But the unfortunate thing is that, you know, most of us here, we don't even know the word ISI. <laughs> I mean, the academics, the lecturers, they don't even know the word ISI journal. Yet, it's not that they don't have research that are good to qualify to be, you know, accepted as ISI papers. Some have even published in ISI journals, but they don't know what is ISI, meaning they don't know their value. They don't know the value of the articles they already have. But now we normally say, okay, Elsevier journals. While Elsevier is just one of the publishers of ISI journal. The broader name or the general name is the ISI journal. Elsevier is just one of the publishers of ISI journals. But here, because now our eyes have opened to Elsevier journals, we know that they are very standard. So we now say, okay, you have to publish in Elsevier journals. So this kind of, let's say, seminar will you know, enlighten the wider public, the postgraduate students, the lecturers, to what the world is really about. Because we talk about uh, university ranking. University ranking, one of the criteria is the number of citations you have per faculty, per lecturer. And if your research is only localized, nobody will cite it, nobody will read it. And you will have zero citation. 
You have researchers whose citation are, let's say, over 1,000, 2,000. And that will now raise their rank globally. But here, we don't even know what is ISI journal. We don't even know what is impact factor. You know, we don't have such information or knowledge. Very few of us do. So such, you know, seminar and uh, information dissemination will, you know, really conscientize the public and uh, will have a positive impact. Then we have another thing that is very, very important, which is promoting academic integrity using plagiarism detectors. Nowadays, you know, because of the number of graduate students we have, we do organize entrance examination, the same way we, we organize post-UME exam. Because we have large pool of the postgraduate students, very large. And once you have large pool, it means you will always have dissertations, thesis being produced every now and then. But then there is something that is very, very important, which is academic integrity. We have plagiarism, which is a very hot topic now. Plagiarism, you know, misappropriation of someone's ideas and uh, results, works without proper, you know, without the appropriate citation. You quote someone verbatim, you know, you think that is not plagiarism because you put the reference. But you quoted his words, word to word, verbatim. Yet you feel, no, I have already put the reference. No, that is plagiarism. Some may go to the extent of copying results, results from somewhere, and just use it as if they performed it. This is a very you know, critical thing that needs to be checked. And how do we check it? We use the plagiarism detectors, which are some softwares commercially available, but one needs to subscribe. That is where I think maybe the problem may come because you have like authenticate, turn it in, cross check. The software, like if you want to submit an article to a very high ranking journal, they will run the article and then they will find, determine what is called the originality report. How much of these wordings in this article is original? It's from your own English. It's not copied from any online resources. If there is any, it will highlight it and tell you the sources. So there is nothing like maybe witch hunting. It will give you the references. This sentence, line one, is copied from this, this, and that. Line two, copied from that. Exactly, it will highlight the words. So one must sit down and change. It's not a crime to use some, you know, to use some one idea, but you have to use your own English. Put it in your own words, and then give the proper citation. Nevertheless, one is not allowed to use someone's result and claim that it is his. So these plagiarism checkers are very, very important for the library and for the postgraduate uh, school. So maybe, because I, I don't know the cost for subscribing to any, Authenticate is very good. Turn it in gives a provision for creating a class. If you have a class, you can ask all the class members to submit all their soft copy of assignments. You now create a class in the software and then submit all their reports. It will cross check who has copied from who in the class, one, and who has copied exactly from outside sources. And that is very, very important for academic integrity. In the world, the world over, there are a lot of you know, high ranking government officials, ministers that went down because they were found to have plagiarized maybe their PhD work. In Germany, I think, not less than, I think, four or five years, a high-ranking minister was, he has to resign. Or she has, I don't remember whether it's a male or uh, a female, you know, because he plagiarized his PhD work. Greater part of his result was plagiarized. So it is really something that to protect the academic integrity of our teaming postgraduate students, we need to, you know, it's, uh, uh, I'm happy that, you know, one of the principal officers is here who has the eye, the ears of the, the management. So this is very, very important to subscribe to at least one of them for the benefit of the postgraduate student and even the library to cross-check any own original work. And seminar on this issue can be something very good to all students and lecturers alike. Then we have the academic social networks. Nowadays, we have Facebook, we have Twitter, we have to go, we have, you know, a lot of them, social network. At the same time, we have the academic type, the academic social network, okay, like ResearchGate. ResearchGate is very, very important for any researcher, an academic, or student. Because you can, if you can identify a leading researcher in your area, 
and follow him. If he publishes any article, you'll be alerted that he has published a new article. And if there is an article of his which you cannot access because maybe you have to pay, you can request that article directly from the author and he will, give, he will gladly give you. Some do upload all their articles, including the data sets on the research gate. And you can communicate, you can post questions. If you are a student, you have a particular question, you feel you need certain enlightenment, you can post questions in which other researchers all over the world will contribute. And that is a very good you know, academic social network. We have the LinkedIn, which is also for professionals, be it academic or just you know, a professional practitioners where they interact, where you know, some vacancies are even advertised, and, and products as well. We have the Scopus. Scopus is very important. Scopus, Google Scholar, and Researcher ID. Because once you have your articles online, you know, there is need for indexing. To, know exact, to monitor who cited, how many persons cited your work. Scopus takes care of that. Any article, any of your article that is cited, if you register, it will now keep track of that, that this your article has been cited by five persons, and these are their, you know, the details. So also Google Scholar. Of recent, I think uh, I read, you know, there was, uh, I don't remember the organization, but it ranks, you know, the best scholars in Nigeria based on their Google Scholar citation. They uploaded their articles, they up, you, up, you create a profile, upload all your articles, any article cited will be, you will be alerted and it will keep track. And again, there is what is called I-index, H-index, depending on the number of citations per article, which are very, very important for the academic environment. So they ranked, you know, the best scholar, maybe based on the number of citations, some having close to 1,500, but uh, the list they considered was, I think, 100. And we have a lot of them here in the university as well that made the list. A lot of them that made the list, whose citations are very high. But if we don't know this, you know, the Google Scholar, the Scopus, you know, we may have a thousand citations, but we have not registered. We are not aware. That is, you know, the role of the library, information dissemination, anything that is important to the academic environment. Then the next part is the e-resources which is very, very important. Here, it's having to do those that need subscription and the open sources, okay? The e-resources, uh, we have subscribed to the Science Direct, which is very, very good, but I still feel the awareness has to be enhanced so that, you know, lecturers, students alike will know what is even Science Direct, how to use it, what are the login details? Because all articles in Science Direct, more often than not, they are not free they are not free. Maybe one in 1,000, maybe if someone, you know, make his own article free by paying a huge sum of dollars. But more often than not, most of them are not free. So you need subscription. And unfortunately, they have, you know, one of the, you know, the highest quality journals that will aid you in whichever research area you try to pursue, okay? So I may not, you know, because of our limitation in phones and other stuff, okay, I may not like suggest other databases. Let's even make use of the science direct that we have. Let's, let's make good use of it. Then later, if there is need, then we can now maybe see the need for more subscription because this, these subscriptions cost a lot of money. But nevertheless, I suggest another one called ProQuest Dissertations and Thesis Global. This is a, uh, a database for dissertations and thesis, MSc and PhD thesis, worldwide, standard dissertation and thesis. I have used it a lot. I have you know, downloaded a lot for a lot of my friends here, and uh, they have really appreciated that, because you can put a topic, and it will give you the full you know, copies of those theses in PDF. So all you need is to download, because you know, one of our limitations here is that some of the students, or oh, one of the most important aspects of postgraduate studies is uniqueness. What is the uniqueness of your research? What is the contribution of your research to the existing literature? And more often than not, graduate students, you know, find it difficult to really say what is their contribution, no matter how little it is. Because really, they don't have, they are not really updated about the current status, let alone know what to add. 
Some of them, they will say, no, this work has not been done here in Abu. <laughs> I said, so is Abu the end of the world? <laughs> because of the fact that this particular work you are trying to do has not been done in Abu, so you feel it's, work, it's, it's worth embarking on. What about the world over? So some, you know, limit their thinking with respect to ABU. Okay, this work is unique because from all the previous research in this department, nobody did something similar. <laughs> and that is really myopic. <laughs> you have to go and search, you know, the world over, all the resources available to see exactly what is the current status. And then what can you add? And you can only do that if you have a lot of information. The journal articles are very important. Then the dissertations are very, very important as well. Because it will give you the detailed you know, information about you know, the literature review, you know, the work itself, the results, and other stuff, which may be very influential to your own work. So like I mentioned, I used it a lot. In fact, when I came here, I was thinking I can still access it. But when I tried to log in, they said, no, I am outside Saudi Arabia. So I said, OK, when I go back. <laughs> so it's like it has been limited. You have to be within. That's for the subscription. So this is very, very important, which I feel if the library can subscribe to it, you know, we have the science grade which takes care of the articles. If we can have this, it will take care of the E thesis and dissertations, which is very, very good resources. Then we have the library genesis. Because this is for subscription, then we have the open sources. You know, the open sources, there are a lot of them. A lot of free you know, websites that you can download, free test books. All you need is good internet connection. One of them is called bookboon.com. Bookboon, I have been using it even before I left. Although they have, you know, in some pages, they put some advertisement to take care of maybe making that book free. But there are a lot of good books in bookboon.com. Then another one, because now, for instance, even if you just type in Google, there is a particular book you are looking for. You can just type in Google, and you may, you may be lucky that someone has uploaded it. Or you can get it for free from another site. You don't know. But there is another one which is very, very important, the library genesis. The library genesis is a compendium of you know, e-books, articles, conference proceedings. And one surprising thing is that it has you know, books that dates back to you know, as all, let's say, early 19, let's say 1900. All classical textbooks that you may not be able to find on the shelf now, you can find them from this library genesis. The only thing is that you can only download a maximum of three textbooks at a time, simultaneous download. That is the only restriction. And as latest as 2015. It is very, very rich. I came to know about this particular one just in February. And when I came to know about it, I started using it to compile because I already have my library, you know, my e-library, because now we are moving away from the, you know, the hard copy library. We have all the books to e-library, where you have all your resources in your flash, in your system, in e-copies. I downloaded over 4,000 books in my area of specialty only, about 4,000 books. And those books are not, you know, any book. They are highly standard books, American books that your money cannot afford. You can have one book, maybe $200. That's now a dollar, about $245 or so. So that would be around how much? <laughs> uh, about $50,000. One book. Even if you are rich, just for one book to spend $50,000, really you will have to think 10 times. Let alone a hundreds of books. So it is really an invaluable resource. And it was when I came you know, to learn about this, that was when I quickly checked our library. I saw the online resources that we have. And uh, I got the number of the webmaster. I called him. I got the number of the university librarian. I called him. I now gave him the website so that we can start making use. Because when I just calculated the number of titles from 1980 to date, there are over 300 titles. And it covers all areas, all areas all areas of specialization, all. So I just thought if we, can be, if we will be able to download these titles, really our library will have you know, an invaluable collection of books. Because I can remember in the, in the good old days when we go to the reserve section, you know, 
to borrow a book for just two hours. You have to be there and read it for two hours. If someone is there waiting, you cannot exceed those two hours again. And you cannot take it out. So that is really a restriction we have on our side, maybe because of fund and other stuff. But with this, we can have you know, a lot. We can download the resources, and then if we have them, we can create, because part of what we have in the e-resources is intranet. We can create an intranet so that we, we don't need internet. The students in the dorm, in the offices, the intranet is easier to you know, download all the books, and we will have the catalog, the collections, so that anybody anywhere within the university, you can just use it. So the first site was libgen.org, but then the host uh, website was chained to gen.lib.rus.ec. But then, again, there is what is the issue of copyright, which is very, very important again. Nowadays, we'll say, ah, then the copyright. You are violating the copyright. Yes, we are violating copyright every now and then, but that doesn't make it correct. But you see, just like I mentioned, there are a lot of sites. If you type a particular book, you can get it free on Google now. You are not the one that uploaded it. Someone has uploaded it. He's the one violating. Either, whether you download or you don't, it is still there. And it will remain there. If they feel, if the owners of the domain or the web, WW, feel that, yes, this website is really having copyright infringement, they will take it off. So while it lasts, why not make good use of it? Our systems, our computers now, in fact, uh, we don't even know that there, is, if there exists, let's say, genuine software, genuine Windows, genuine Office. We only get our system with all the programs installed. Whereas in the real sense, you know, the Windows may not be, may be cracked, the Office and all the stuff. That is because the system we have is not something that, that discourages that for now. And again, the fund, because for your system, it means every software, if it's not free, you have to purchase it. And a single office, office, this Microsoft office, we see, if you have to purchase it, it may cost maybe nothing less than $300. And that may be just single user, single user. But just like I'm saying, yes, there are copyright issues, but you are not the one that uploaded it. You are not the one that violate. You are only getting it out. If they feel really this website violated certain copyright issues, they will take it off the internet. It will become offline, isn't it? So while you, you know, find a valuable resource, make good use of it while it lasts. Then we have, I just want to share the Saudi Arabian case study. There we have what is called the Saudi Digital Library. Saudi Digital Library. The digital library has subscription to almost most of the databases we have in all areas. And all universities have access to the Saudi Digital Library. So that anywhere you are within the kingdom, you, can, you need anything in any database, you can access it. So if our country, because I was reading, I think three or two years back, the NUC was like trying to have that idea, like to subscribe to certain databases and make it like uniform in Nigeria. So that will be a very good idea. Then there is what is called Salmon Search. Salmon Search is a powerful search engine that searches in thousands of databases, thousands of libraries for a lot of information. Then we have the databases and e-books databases, because there we have subscription, let's say, to Wiley Online, a lot of e-books databases that there are those that you can download, there are those that you can view online. It may not be available for download, for offline use, but you can view the book online. But that is because you know the money is there for all this subscription. So here yeah, we have to make use of what we have and uh, look at our pockets, okay? But this is what obtains there. Education is given very high priority. As it is said, you know, the UNESCO, I think the, the budget for education for developing countries is supposed to be, I think, minimum of 26%, isn't it? So the Arabia is, is allocating 26% of its budget to education. And that 26% of its budget that is going to education alone Believe you me, if you calculate it, it's more than the total budget in Nigeria. The total budget in Nigeria. And that is why you know, resources are available for research. Libraries are equipped, well equipped. Laboratories are well equipped. Any equipment one needs, just apply, justify, and then it will be obtained. 
That is because the money, the budgetary allocation is there. But here, I don't think we are up to 10%. 10%. The budgetary allocation to education, maybe seven to eight or six, but not up to 10%. But every time we'll be clamoring that, you know, education is very important, is very vital. There will be increase in budgetary allocation. But then we use figures, you know, the politicians, they use figures that this government is the highest, you know, that sponsors all that, you know, contributes to education. They will quote, okay, we spend so, so billions in education. While we are not talking in terms of percentage relative to the budget, we only talk, you know, we deceive people sometimes using statistics that we have spent 500 billion in education. This is the government that did the best for education. But we don't compare it to the budget. Our budget is always going up. What is the percentage of that that we spend to education? What is the percentage? So we only quote figures to, you know, appease the general populace that, yes, we are doing very well. So really, if budgetary allocation will increase, although now, because of this state fund, the needs assessment and other stuff, really there is some improvement going on in the educational sector in terms of the infrastructure, in terms of the lab equipment. Really, there is significant improvement. So I hope one day, one time, we will get there. Then we have user friendliness. Here I refer to, you know, how is the library user friendly? I mean, it's services to students, to you know, its clients or customers. How is the user friendliness evaluated? Okay, one is you have you know the online catalog. Just I think at uh, last night when I was trying to put down what I would present this morning, I checked the online catalog in the library website. When I click, nothing is there, and we have it. You know, online catalog. When I clicked, nothing opens. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> All right, so really the online catalog is very, very important and it will increase the user friendliness of the services delivered by the library. Because a student in his hostel or anywhere, if he wants to search for a book, a particular title, he can open the library site and check. Is it available? If it's available, because over there you can even book, put the book on hold. You can put it on hold for like 24 hours. Because you need it, you are afraid someone may come and take it out. So you can put it on hold and quickly rush to the library and take it out. You check it out. So this will increase you know, the visibility and the user friendliness. So that anywhere you are, you can check, is it an article? Whatever collection we have, and I believe that we have the catalogs in our system. So it's only, you know, uh, it's just the next step is to make them online. So that anywhere you are, you can just search. I want to go and check for this book. Is it available? I check. If it's available, you see it. If it's not available, then, you know, over there, if a book is not available, you can suggest to the librarian, to the university librarian, that, okay, this book is very important, and I'm suggesting that you get it. And they will get it. When they get the book, you will be given the priority. You will be given a priority. You will be the first one to use it. Even if it's an article, you search for an article, maybe the university has not subscribed to this article. In, in, a, in a semester, I think, you, have, you can ask for, I think, 7 or 14 articles that are not subscribed by the university, and they will get it for you. They will get it for you via what they call interlibrary loan. They will get it for you free of charge. If there is any report, any dissertation or thesis in which it's not available in that database for dissertation, and you need it, you can ask that I want this book, I want this dissertation, I want this report. And they will go to that university and get it for you. You can make a copy, you can do whatever, and then return it back. It goes to tell you how you know, user-friendly the library is supposed to be, which is one of its cardinal objectives is to serve the student, is to serve the academic environment. Then we have the intranet, which I just explained in the previous slide. You know, when we have all these online resources, which I know we have a lot from other sources. So an intranet, you know, you don't need internet, and uh, the speed will be faster. And anywhere you are within the university, you can, you know, make use of those e-materials that the library has. And then we have the self-checkout machines. You know, although now, you know, we normally use the a traditional one where you take your books to the counter and they will stamp, stamp, and you know, it will now be checked out and you carry it. But you know, nowadays there is the self-checkout machine. 
which is something like this. Each book has a barcode. You don't need any library attendant to, you know, for you to check out any book. You just walk to this computer because when you register either as a student or faculty member, you go to the library and register with them. They will be given a password, an ID and password. So you just come with a book, open it, slide it through, and it will come up where you enter your ID and password. Once you do that, you now, there is a laser here that will read the barcode and it will automatically show the name of the book and everything. Then you put it aside, if it's five books, 10 books, you do that, and it will record it in your own profile. Then you carry the books and walk out. Again, there is detection gates. Because nowadays, you know, we have the security at the gate to make sure this book, is it overdue, or did you really check it out or not, you know? but. Nowadays, we have the, detec the detection gate because each book has a barcode. So once passing through the detection gate, it uses radio frequency identification. If it's not checked out, then an alarm will be triggered. You, 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 and then it means you are trying to carry out, you know, to take a book out without authorization. So in that case, maybe a security can be sitting just watching if you hear the sound, then you have to come back and search your bag, which one is not you know, checked out properly. And that will also prevent, because you know, some of the students, sometimes the way they do, you know, they remove the pages, they cut it, and, and leave the book. And that's really a serious thing again, entirely. So this is another thing, okay, the detection gates. You can come with anything, you can come with your bag, you know, and everything, but once you are going out, even if you hide it, no matter how deep you hide it, this, the, the detection gate will trigger, you know, the alarm will be triggered. Because this is what they normally use even in shopping malls, you know, the supermarkets, so that they don't need to have anybody, you know, checking you in and out. Every item has a barcode. And once you are checking it out, they will now demagnetize it, you know, so that it will be safely moved out else an alarm will be triggered. The same thing with the books, okay? Then this is, you know, how they are just like this one, you know, when coming in and when going out. Then other user friendliness, you know, I mentioned about the booking, even the extension, you know, sometimes you can do it online. You don't need to come to the library because all your data is online. You created a look in detail. You can log in and see all the books that are due and then you can decide to renew. You don't need to come physically to the library with the books and get renewal. You can renew online. And in some instances, you can even renew by a phone call. So these are ways to increase the user friendliness, although just like I mentioned, some of them we may say we are not there yet, maybe our phone and other stuff. But nevertheless, it's good to know that some of these things, one, exist. And at the same time, we can have a plan a long-term plan, maybe in so-so years, we will acquire this, we will acquire this, we will do this. Action plan is very important. Okay, we'll not just sit down and say, okay, we don't have fun now, so let's forget all about this. Okay, at least we need to know, you know, that they exist and have some plan. Then I talked about the inter li uh, library loan for articles, for, jo uh, for books, and also for other uh, publications. Then another aspect which we discussed uh, is the roles of teaching or research assistants. First, the need for teaching assistants. Nowadays, you know, with respect to our contemporary situation that we have, you know, initially when one graduates with very good class of degree, he's employed as is a graduate assistant or assistant lecturer. As time moves on, we have a lot of lecturers then Maybe more often than not, one must have an MS before you are now, you know, taken in as either a research assistant or lecturer too or whatever it is. The need for the research assistant or teaching assistants cannot be overemphasized because they help in administering or in teaching, in reducing the load, you know, because here we have a lot of students, a lot in a class, maybe 50, some 200. But we always aspire to go higher, I mean, to have good ranking. In good ranking university, you can have student to lecturer ratio, maybe 15 to 1. Every lecturer in a class, you will have a maximum of 15 students, some even 10. So you can imagine, you know, the kind of monitoring that the lecturer, you know, will do. Because if it's 10 students, you can monitor the progress of each one. 
Not in our situation whereby some will be standing by the door, some on the floor, you know, some are not even hearing. No even audio, you know, the microphone to get the message across. So definitely after the exams, a lot of casualties will <laughs> result, definitely. And that is not good. So, you know, increasing the student lecturer ratio, we need a lot of teaching assistants. But then, you know, we are restricted with some phone and other stuff in which I am like proposing a particular recruitment policy, you know. The American system or even the British system, they have this issue of teaching assistants. They employ them some more often than not on part-time basis or as a contract staff in the sense that maybe your contract ends when you get your degree, your MSc or PhD. More often than not, when they have a project, you'll be paid from that project. Or the school may decide to pay you some amount and you'll dedicate certain hours of your time every week to supporting the teaching activities, maybe in grading, maybe in taking certain classes. And in our own situation now, given what we have at, as at present and the present circumstances, because you know, you can have a lot that will be incorporated at, at, when they finish their first degree, but at the end, when they have a better, a juicy job, they will all leave. I remember when we started as uh, assistant lecturers, we were many, about five. But now I'm almost like the only one remaining. The first one, this one went to NNPC, then LNG, this one Shlombeja, this one, you know. So they all left. That is brain drain. But a situation whereby, let's say, someone is employed, okay, you are doing your MSc or PhD. Okay, you will be employed like teaching aid. You will be given certain like allowance because you are not like a permanent staff. You will be given, let's say, let's say an MS, let's say 40,000, a PhD student, let's say 50,000. And you will be helping in teaching courses, grading, and other stuff, which will help in reducing the number of classes. A class having 50 students, you can break it into 25, 25. You know, this one can take this section, this one can take the other section. And then at the end, if you complete your PhD, you must have been evaluated both morally, academically, and how good you are to participate in a teamwork. And then you can announce, okay, do we really need you? If yes, then you will now be engaged. If no, then you can, you are a PhD, so you can get a lot of job elsewhere. But then, you know, this will increase the number of teaching assistants that we have. We are not like trying to eliminate getting tenure staff. No, but a system whereby if you are engaged, you will not come back after, you know, two months, three months to say, no, I'm leaving because maybe I got a job in NPC. No, we are not saying maybe nobody should get a job in NPC, but we should have Academic is something that has to go with interest and passion. You have to have the passion to pursue you know, a career in academics. If really you know your career or your interest in NMPC, then keep on trying, not just to come here after one month, two months, and you know, leave. But this will help in having a lot of teaching aids, and it will improve the lecturer, the student lecturer ratio, and the, you know, the dissemination of, you know, the knowledge will be highly enhanced because you will have more hands to help. More hands to help. And that is exactly what is practiced in the medical field, in medicine. In medicine, normally, they don't employ you as academic staff when you graduate, when you want to join the residency program. Maybe just one or two. Maybe one or two may be employed as academic staff. All the rest will just be under the program, residency program. They will be paid but they are not academic staff. Their residency or their contract terminates when they finish their residency, when they become consultants. When they now become consultants, they will not be evaluated. Do we need a consultant in this area? If yes, then you will not be engaged by the university as academic staff. If no, then go elsewhere. <coughs> Whoever needs a consultant, you are qualified then, go elsewhere and get another job. That is what is being practiced over there in the medical field. And that is a very good practice because it will encourage our students to pursue their higher degrees. That is why any medical student that finishes, you know, all that is in his mind is to go for residency, residency, residency. Though nowadays, even in other areas, you know, they, we always aspire for masters, for PhD. Now because, you know, the condition is survival of the fittest. Before, hardly do you find, you know, undergraduate student in your area. Now all have finished. Now before, Hardly do you find an MSc holder. Now, almost all are MSc holders. 
Before hardly do you see a PhD holder. Now everybody that finishes, let's say his MSc, is aspiring to go for a PhD. So very soon we will all become, you know, uh, a country, uh, a pool of professors. And Nigerians, they really make this name. They have high qualification. I remember I read an article that in the States, Nigerians have the highest qualification. That's masters and PhDs. That's when you count, you know, all those countries outside the States. Nigerians have the highest qualifications. Then we have their roles in teaching, okay, which I just mentioned. Sorry, can you explain that again? Which one? The, the, the last point that you made. The proposed... In the States, yeah, it was an article that Nigerians residing in the States, in the U.S., they have the highest, they are a group of people that have the highest qualification. Most of them have MSc and PhDs, you know, when compared to people from other countries. Yes. Even Americans. Okay, even the Americans. So. <laughs> Then I have highlighted about the roles of the teaching aids, you know, in grading, research, and, commu and community, uh, community work. Because the teaching aids, they are like part-time, you know, staff in a way, but they will be paid. But yet, they will be exposed to all the working, you know, ethics of the university. So that at the end, upon completion of their PhD, if they are found, you know, fit to be engaged, then they have already been equipped with all the, you know, necessary, uh, stuff that they need. And this will help them wherever they are. Because I experienced it, because I worked as also a teaching aide. Engage in uh, committee work, you know, curriculum review, and a lot of other stuff which has helped me upon my graduation. So it is really a very important part. In mechanical engineering, I think they have started practicing something like that under the Shell Chair, the office of the Shell Chair. They have their teaching aids which they employ. But if the university can like, make it like a sort of policy, because in the medical area, in, the, in medicine, that is how it has been practiced. So it is not something like entirely new. <laughs> it is not something like entirely new. It is just like trying to make it uniform. Thank you for listening. Okay. So, thank you so much. Um, let's give him a round of applause. Is Ali here? No, Ali Ula. Okay. I wanted to start with an example from here. You see a lot of things, everything that he said is important. Every single word. I discussed with him just yesterday. It was around 2 p.m. Yeah, right? around 1. Around yeah, 1. at exactly 1. And here he is today with us with this extensive idea. I wanted to start with Ali because I gave them an assignment last week and I was like, you guys can do this in five hours. <laughs> that job is said to be done as I am talking to you this morning. So what I'm saying is there is nothing that is impossible. There is nothing, it's just a willingness to do. If I have an assignment to do, it is going to take me one week to do that assignment. I always tell myself, within that one week, how many hours am I going to use? Probably just three, four hours. But then you spread it over five weeks. Why don't you just identify three weeks, I mean three hours at a goal, and just, you don't use it. And that was exactly the strategy that we had thought. If you like, you will say, no, 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 the time is too short. <laughs> So, right from the time I met him, and his response to our request, he's telling us a story. And I want us to learn from this, please. Um, as I said, everything that he shared with us is important. 
but I will just recapitulate very few. I <coughs> made a mention of one press. I think without him knowing the potency of that press, he said you could remember when I was, when he was a student, he used to visit the reserve library during the good old days of the library. <laughs> during the good old days. What he's saying is that our library is dead. Last week we were here, I told them, this library is dead. They were like, no, 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 please. Last week I was telling them this library is dead. And they were, no, 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 there are certain things that are good. I said, okay, I took a pen and paper, I said, okay, you tell me just one thing that is good in this library. And I'm going to record it so as I will have um, I, I will have a point if I'm making a presentation about this library that this is what we are doing that is good. I need to get one single thing, and I'm happy he has confirmed it today. I'm saying this because I am I want to help us. Okay, we are helping each other. If I don't want to help this library, I will say we are doing a beautiful thing. Then. We, you, he did mention about something that is very, very important also. And he said, what happens to if a person is looking for an old book, mm. what does he have to do? For? If, if a person is looking for a book that is old, all published title, yeah. what, what does he have to do? In the library genesis. In library genesis. Yes. So will it be there? It, it is there. Do you it see is the there. Last time we were talking about reading, it, this it is there. I said we don't have to worry. Google has already. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You see, all these books that we feel they are all, mm. and somebody is going to come looking yeah. for it. Yeah. Only God knows when. Yes. You, you understand the mm. point? You don't have to. Some people over there have already mm. done that job for us. In fact, I remember I downloaded some books, you know, written by the <coughs> the whites, then the colonial masters in Hausa, yeah. 1927. They wrote it in a house, like I think describing the grammar also, 1927. Mm -hmm. Very old books. Yeah. Very so old books. And reading, classical books. Yeah. On issues of reading, don't, don't be afraid. You, you understand the point. We, don't have, we are not archival um, institution. Mm -hmm. We are not. Our mission is to support teaching, learning, and research. Mm -hmm. That's our mission. And to do that, we have to satisfy our current activities. Our current activities. If 1% or 2%, 3% of our users will look at all, I mean, are interested in all published materials, we can get it for them. There are specialized institutions that are meant for that. But I cannot imagine myself keeping a book to eternity for 10 years, 20 years, and then one person is going to make use of it. Yeah. <laughs> if I calculate the amount, it's going to cost me to keep one book in this library. And I'm telling you I'm going to do that. I can calculate the amount, it will cost me to keep one single book in this library on a shelf without being utilized. And I will come up with the people. After two, three, four years, I would rather go out with that book and then spend $100 to go get that book on the entire library long. Mm. Or even photocopy it. Mm. Because majority of those old books are not even copyrighted. Yeah. They are copyright as it's fair. Yeah. So you can copy as many copies as you like without any fear of copyright infringement. And uh, most importantly, he did mention of uh, issues related to uh, the need for us to have intranet whereby all our activities doesn't all have to be art. Yeah. I mean, most of our activities doesn't have to be online. Yeah. It's been cost effective for us. Yeah. 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 And above all, I, I, I feel all what he has said is very valid and we need to be cognizant of that. It has just portrayed our repositioning and plan. You understand the point? Up to now, we are in repositioning, we are, we are compiling repositioning exercise. Mm -hmm. 
and because if you have something that is dead, you don't want to start fixing, uh, reviving one area and leaving the others. Yeah. No, no, no. That's why it appears as if we are in limbo, but we are not. Mm -hmm. You see, by the time we are done with our repositioning document, everything is going to change. Everything. And I'm happy he did mention issues related to what? Friendliness of what? Of customers. Mm -hmm. You need, we need to be very friendly, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, having said this, we will allow the, some, we're going to interactive session for questions, comments, and uh, observations, please. Thank you. Okay. So, the floor is open, not in any particular of that. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Interesting presentation. I want to ask in the area of uh, serial resources, mostly we tend to keep, we want to keep comprehensive uh, collection of uh, serial resources. Online books, once a book is published, it's complete and it's once and for all. But in, in that of uh, serial resources, a journal issue, for instance, the issue, the articles in a particular issue is different from other articles. From the next one, okay. volume yeah, one, yeah. number one, number three, mm. they are all different, different, different. Yeah. And this is the what informs our interest in trying to keep mm -hmm. complete because you don't know what the reader will Need. be interested in. Yeah. From your uh, so join your area, yeah. I don't know if you are aware of uh, any of these databases or any source that have comprehensive uh, collection of uh, mm -hmm. serial resources <coughs> in your area. Okay. Uh, thank you so much yeah. for the question. Oh, sorry. Remember, okay. he's not a librarian, but he is speaking like what? Like what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. You see, the LibGen, the library genesis, it has serial resources, just like you mentioned. It has articles in journals, and the complete articles from the beginning of the journal till the current issue. So you can download the whole, all the issues, the volumes everything together and it is being updated so you can keep track if there is new issue you can check and you can download everything the library genesis has it yes. and most of the journals are even they may they need even subscription they are not like free journals but with the library genesis you can get them all for free yeah so in other words what he's saying is that if, if almost all journals that are online have Archives uh, back set issues. Mm. You, you understand the point. Yeah. So you don't need the year. Supposing if you are subscribing to library quickly, mm. online subscription, mm. they will give you access to their backlog um, collection mm. right from the time they, they, they start. Mm. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I really appreciate. This presentation is highly commendable. Thank you. Uh, looking at the situation we are, uh, looking at the level we are now, mm -hmm. your presentation has really exposed more to us the challenges that the African University has. Mm -hmm. More especially in a situation where you find the academic staff, more in particular, mm -hmm. uh, have a sort of a lukewarm attitude towards uh, embarking on this uh, for more research. Mm. If it's, it, it, we, we are in a situation where you find sometimes the lecturers, in fact, I know even you know, a professor now, mm. currently, mm. when you talk of this internet, he begins to crown himself. After all, what is all this about? The books are there. Yeah. So, how can you, how do you expect such a professor mm. or such a lecturer mm. to impart mm. ways of research mm. and so to his students? Mm. So, that's why, as you are speaking, as you are, as you are, speak, as you, as you are speaking, I was just thinking that the, uh, the challenges before the acting was they are enormous. Mm -hmm. Because to take us to the ideal uh, situation yeah, yeah. That, uh, in this kind of uh, environment. Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, I feel this is what is even militating against 
the progress of the site on the part of students to go and so on. So really this is a challenge and this is a paper. I think I will be, I will not be wrong if I say you belong to us more than maybe the engineers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. So yeah. maybe let me end up with a question. Mm. Uh, you may mention like in the US, uh, maybe after taking the Americans, Nigerians, I think must have, have the highest qualification. Yeah. What does that mean? What is the implication? Uh, what it means is that we Nigerians have, you know, for, we are fond of getting higher degrees. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because it, when you calculate the percentage of Nigerians in the states and the percentage that has masters and PhD, just as I was rightly corrected, is even higher than the Americans. So we have passion for education. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to say is that the future and the future now lies with education. But because we are limited, our resources are highly limited. Our funds are limited. So still, despite the fact that we have the know-how, we have the exposure and what have you, coming back to implement what we have learned, just like now, you, you know, I have shown you what obtains there. So let's say I come back and I'm passionate and I want to see that I implement all this. I will be limited because of my pocket, no fund. So if you rightly remember, I mentioned budgetary allocation, where we need to go to at least 26%. And where I mentioned, they are because they give, they follow that 26% every year. So their funds are available for research, for equipping the libraries. This particular self-check, I think, KFUPM was the first to use it in the Middle East. It was the first to use that self-check, uh, check-out machine in the Middle East. Meaning it is very important and innovative and costly at the same time. But because there is, you know, government backing for education, the libraries are well equipped with, you know, titles that are up to date and the laughs as well. So anything having to do with research, with academics, with scholarship is where is given the adequate attention. But here, you know, just like I rightly mentioned, still we are moving forward because we have this state fund, a lot of structures are being erected, our labs now have better equipment than what we had before. So I want to believe that one day, one time, we may be optimistic that we will get there. And we already have the people, you know, with the technical know-how, because now if you count the number of Nigerians, let's say in the States, in Malaysia, in any other countries pursuing their masters and PhDs, they are always on the rise. So meaning we are there, you know, to learn, to get the technical know-how. But then when you come back, that is when the story sometimes may change. Because no matter how, what you learned, you will come back with the aim of implementing. You see, uh, when I came, be, be, because just like I mentioned, I organized like my library having to do with the civil engineering library and some library for engineering. So I, I first dropped in BUK, went to the head of the civil engineering and gave him the books, the e-copies I have. I went to the librarian of, U, of BUK, gave him this same link and advise him to upload, uh, to download as many as he can. I did the same thing for the Kano University of Science and Technology and Wodil before I came here. When I came here also, Poli, I invited the head of uh, the civil engineer because this is information dissemination. This is the little I can do for now. Because no matter how good information you have, if you don't disseminate it to the, to the right people via the right channel, it will still become useless. So even if I have this good resource that I feel a lot of our people will benefit, if I keep it to myself, then once I die, does it. I will die with it. Like yesterday, I, was, uh, I went to the chemical, engineering, uh, so, uh, the chemical engineering head. I was asking him. So he said that he knows the website since around 2011. But he's afraid of the copyright infringement. So he's the only one that is using it. So I now say, yes, I know there is copyright issue. You know, some will say, no, you don't have the copy. But you are not the one that uploaded it. Whether you use it or you don't, it is still there. And nobody will sue you because you downloaded. So you are not the one that uploaded or that created the website. So I feel most especially the third world, because that is why the developed nations are well far ahead of us. They have the resources. They have the books. They have the money to buy anything they need. While here, we don't. And for that reason, we will keep on, you know, being at the low side. So this is something that will, in a way, uplift us because knowledge is the most powerful thing you can ever give to anybody. 
And once you have the correct books, because now here we normally rely on Indian books. 3,000, 5,000, maybe 7,000, highest. Indian authors. While to get, you know, to the root of the matter, American system is the best system of education we have. And they have the best schools. They have the best curriculum, the best books you can ever find for a particular course. Because there, you know, the books are structured in such a way as to address, let's say, a 200 level student, a 300, with adequate examples, with adequate exercises. And over there, we have an attitude for reviewing books. We don't use any book that is more than three years old. If a book is more than three years old and you want to adopt it in your course, you have to justify why you still want to use it. Else, you have to go and find a new version of the book or, a, or another book written by another author that is good. Else, you have to justify why you still want to maintain that book that is more than three years old, just three years old, three years old. While here, you know, we have books, 70s, you know, this. <laughs> I'm not saying maybe the recent ones are the most important. We can have classical books, old ones that are very good. But it goes to tell you the culture, you know, the habit they have, you know, in believing that with modernity, with age, comes new ideas. The books that are 10 years, 20 years, they believe there are some new information available now, which may not be available in those books. But over here, you know, most of the lecturers sometimes, they don't even have a reference book for a course. We only rely on handouts. Some will rely on that, and even the students that do not buy or purchase the handout they, in some schools, not here, they may be victimized. <laughs> so it's only on the handout. And sometimes a student will be you know, stranded. You come to the library looking for a book in a particular area, you cannot find anything relevant. And you know, God will not just break your, break your skull and pour all the knowledge. You have to get it somewhere. You have to learn it. So if you don't have the resources, you'll be handicapped. And over there, they have the resources. And that is why I can say they are best. They are more than. And that is why anybody from here that goes there, he will perform wonders. He will be among the best, if not the best. Our third class students, when they go there, they become the best in their classes. The best. So it goes to tell you that we are being suppressed. It's not that we are dull. It's not that we are not smart or intelligent. But the condition, the atmosphere is not very conducive. The atmosphere is not very conducive. There, the atmosphere is very sound and conducive to learning. So they will, your potentials will now be you know, manifested, will now be extracted. We have a lot of good brains all over the world, all over the world, that are performing wonders. But right here, when you come back, a lot of other stuff will now suppress your ability and what have you. So we need to like, try to explore those potentials in us. And one of them, because I, like, I was discussing with the dean, I said, our lecturer-student relationship here is too bad and it's not acceptable. It's not acceptable. It pains me when a student, it pains me when a student you know, takes a course and the results comes out, he has a question mark. And he has to take the course again. The lecturer doesn't care. And nobody will do anything. Nobody will now point accusing finger at the lecturer to say, where is his script? You must find his script. He will not take this course again because he has sat for it. Maybe there is attendance sheet for the, the, the exams. This is not obtainable anywhere in the world. Anywhere. And again, you see, you know, sometimes we have CA 40%, exam 60%. Some courses, you know, no CA, only 100% exams. You can come that day for the exams, and unfortunately, maybe you had some problem at home or some problem. You may be the best student, but you are not mentally stable. And unfortunately, you can get 20%. That means F. In the American system, you have at least three exams per course. If it, if it doesn't have um, practical, you have major one, major two, and the final. If it has practical, a single course will have five exams. Five exams. Meaning if in exam number one, you didn't do very well, you still have the chance to improve two, three. Then at the end, you will now at least get a good grade. And the passing grade in the American system is very tough. It's 70%. Here, A is 70%. American system is more thorough than the British system. Though here, you know, we are neither here nor there. We claim to follow the American system in theory. Yeah, we claim to have abandoned the UK system, you know, the almighty June, and adopted the semester system. 
but we are still not there. It is now that we want to introduce coursework at PhD level, which is American you know, system. But the, most imp the unfortunate thing is that the good side of the UK system, we have neglected it. The good side of the American system, we have not adopted yet. So we are in between. Because the almighty June for the student, that may be the best. Only your final year, you'll be graded, you'll, you know, your GPA will be based on your final year exams. And normally the first, second year may be very turbulent, you know. So the final year, you normally have very good grades. So you will graduate with good class, which is the UK system, which we dropped, the almighty June. We adopted the semester system. Yes, the flexibility in the semester system, we don't follow it. Because in the semester system, you graduate at your own pace. If you are very intelligent, you can, now we have five years, let's say engineering, graduate in three years, in four years. But if you are in 100 level, you cannot take a 200 level course, which is allowed by the semester system inherent in the American system. And the, you know, the, uh, the uh, relationship between the lecturer and student that is inherent in both systems, we don't have it here at all. There, a student is your client. He is your master. You are serving him. <laughs> you are serving him. In my place, a student can write petition to the vice chancellor, and he will act. And he will act. So you don't, you know, touch students unjustly. I'm not saying you are compromising the system, but you have to do justice to the student. Or like here, where, you know, the students, they will say, good morning, sir. <clears throat> You will not even respond. <laughs> if you have any problem, you will come, he will just drive you out. You miss a test or you are not well, you know, you missed a test or exams. There is nothing like make up exams here. Nothing like that. Nothing like that. And something can happen. You can have an accident. You can be bedridden, indisposed in the hospital, yet. <laughs> <laughs> If you want to adopt the American system, mm. yeah, which we have been trying to, yeah. the students do not adopt the way the American students are also mm. supposed to behave. Yeah. You, because I'm telling you, 99.9% mm. of our students will not fit into the American system. Yeah, yeah I, I'm serious. Yeah. yeah. I'm se so it's not all about what? I, I have tried it. Mm. For the last one and a half years, mm. I've been adopting American ways of doing things. Mm. In this, I told myself I'm not going to compromise. Yeah. Well, that was why the need for my training outside. Yeah. Mm. yeah. But most importantly, there are certain good material for withdrawal. Mm. You can do no nothing. Yeah. In the America, you don't have to withdraw somebody. Yeah. The student will voluntarily write back. Mm. Voluntarily withdraw. Mm. If you ask him why, he will say no, because I cannot come. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, how many students will do that? Yeah. <laughs> you see? As the, uh, at the semester that I graduated, I spent four and a half years for my PhD. One of my classmates dropped <laughs> voluntarily. So it's not about deception. Yeah. Here our students will be what? Will, be, will keep deceiving themselves and they keep deceiving the system and mm. the lecturer. Yeah. They knew they cannot cope and they will still persist. Mm. And wasting your time and wasting the time of hope. Mm. Or, 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 or wasting their own time also. It doesn't go, I mean it's, it's two way traffic. The American system will give you the leeway. Yeah. Whereby your lecturer uh, it's your friend. Yeah. But I'm telling you, once you do something that goes contrary to his expectation, mm. his face will change. Mm. As if he has never <laughs> known you. That, that, that just the way it goes. Yeah. And I am happy he did mention uh, issues related to quality of text. Yeah. Okay? The last week I was telling them that I'm not going to buy American, I'm, I'm not going to buy um, what do you call it, Indian authors. Yeah. <laughs> I think I said it. Yeah. They don't. It's good for somebody outside to come and yeah. for a great what you are saying. I waited for eight months for me to get American text. I ordered them since last October for my department, one thousand two hundred. 
But I would rather wait eight months than go buy a new Indian, Indian pets. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Now we have them in the, in the department yeah. and everybody is happy. Yeah. At least if no, if at least I'm happy yeah. because I know the war. Yeah. Yeah, and thank you for also mentioning the American yeah. education system in the best. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, go ahead. Thank you very much. Yeah. I'm a fan of that campus of first and second degree. Okay. You see, what beats my imagination is this idea of uh, the core course. When you find a hundred students, because I know they usually have some in the uh, register. Once you have 25, the next 26 you go to. In fact, for a core course, you can have A to H lecturers. And I've been saying this thing since 78 that I came to this system. But people feel as if uh, you are not in America, you can't do this. Honestly, I'm well impressed. Everything you said, even the last time my head of department gave a report here, I know where he was heading to. But as you said, the major problem we have here is money. Yeah. Ever since I got to this system in 78, of course, Kali Mahmoud, who was an American, was an university like we are I think he did the best. After he left, I think that's the time we started having this problem. Now, having said that, let me say something. You mentioned something about uh, ranking of the university. Yes. I was privileged on two occasions when I was a um, Liberian teacher to sit on panels where decisions are taken for promotions. Mm. Honestly, I was not impressed. What I see, the quality people are being given, are lecturers to, for promotion to senior lecturers mm. or even. The other day, I was even privileged to even visit the streets mm. where they are being. Most of the publications you have today, you are not even talking of international journals. Yeah. And I looked at myself, mm. with the soul of my husband resting. Mm -hmm. When we, we are doing, um, um, public, um, public, when we are publishing, mm. we don't even talk of local publications. Yeah. In fact, I'm looking for ways that I will get his publications online. Mm. They are all published with reputable international journals. Mm. Most of them in America. Mm. He had his first, I mean, second and third degree from America. In the past, people used to condemn America. And I always say, look, you can't condemn them. Yeah. But I'm happy today that you have come out openly to say this. American system is the best. Yeah. And I wish they would, you know, for it. But ABU mm. have to sit up. Honestly, publication mm. is nothing to write home about. You, you get a, 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 a friend of yours from the UK, mm. you publish in their journal, they come to you, they publish. Mm. International publication is no go area. Yeah. In the past, they used to have a sort of maybe 20% international or 10 It is not that again. Mm. But the earlier, the better for ABU yeah. to go back and start publishing a well reputable mm. international journal. Yeah. That's my point. Thank you. It's not, uh, sorry, it's not about ABU. It's not about ABU. You know, when I first came, my first meeting with you, I said your job is very important. Mm. If not what? The most important mm. on campus. Mm. So it is we, the librarians, mm. that will identify and guide ABU on what to do. Yeah. Mm. You understand the point? Mm. All this, mm. you don't expect the VC or any person to do this, mm. or the department. It's we, it's our own responsibility. And that is the way I see us. And that's why I always <coughs> say your job is the most important on campus. You see, if you go through the, our repositioning plan, mm. we have a, a services. Mm. We want that service. You went through it? Yes. We want that service. Can you remember the service? To, to work with the lecturers of the high, high, impact, high impact journal mm. publishing. Yeah, yeah. We are mm. opening yeah. a whole department mm. for that. Okay. In this library, yeah. you see, mm. our repositioning plan doesn't leave anything mm. to chance. Mm. And I'm serious. Mm. I'm serious. Mm. We have proposed a set of 35 services mm. in our repositioning document that will capture almost everything. Mm. Everything that we'll be doing once our plan uh, is, is rolled out will be 
improving teaching learning research, no more knowledge. No more knowledge. Yeah. I'm sorry, I have an external examination and I'm one of the examiners. They keep calling. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He also has a lecture too. Yeah. If you if you can spare some time with you guys, I have no problem. But okay. I don't know. Oh, what I have you need to hear? Huh? What I have, I think you need to hear. Okay, go ahead, please. Now, in the course, of, uh, Dr. Lukman, I yes. appreciate your presentation. It's like in, in, in another wake up call mm -hmm. for the profession. Mm -hmm. Now, in the course of your presentation, I discovered that uh, the library has a big role yes. in academic vibrancy yes. and ranking of yes. every university. Yes. Now, if we have this as a target, mm. then there is a need mm. for a complete reorientation mm. in the training of librarians mm. and the subsequent training, what we call capacity building. Mm. Many of us, yes, if you ask us how many times we went to a seminar mm. or a conference, yes. national or international last, it's almost zero. Mm. And you cannot compete in a world mm. where academics is moving so fast mm. in terms of technology and other things by not allowing or, uh, it, let me put it, encouraging mm. the staff to get educated yeah. in line mm. with the current trend of mm. issues. Now, if we have the role, which he has collaborated from the last statement mm. he made, then there's, there's a, an urgency in the place of staff training. training. Yeah. I don't know if I'm wrong. Yeah, I'm no, you are correct. And I think, I don't know maybe if that is also captured in the repositioning plan, which the library has, which I suppose I think is a very vital point, that's the capacity building. She, she, you see, <laughs> <coughs> whoever read the continuing document, part of the, I, I'm adopting mm. balanced scorecard model okay. for, in, for, for management of change. Mm. And an important parameter mm. about that, that is one important, it has four constructs. Mm. The financial metrics, mm. Learning and innovation mm. is the second. Mm. You see, mm. then it has a uh, business process redesign mm. and customer service perspective. Mm. So um, the, the learning and innovation is captured mm. in that. Okay. It's part of a conference, seminars, mm. it's part of it. Yeah. And most importantly, mm. what we are doing right now mm. is what? It's part, it's, of part the, of it, yeah. it's part of it, yeah. It's part of the training. Yeah, yeah. It's part of the training. Mm. If we don't pay attention to it, mm. I wouldn't mm. bring him back here. I mean, yeah. why, why here? Mm. Because I want to learn. Mm. And okay. just, okay, sorry. Yeah, the fact that he is here shows our commitment to life. Mm. Yeah. And just one last point I want to just add to the comment made by uh, the second to the last uh, speaker. You know, the, the American system uh, really is more thorough. The, it's because here, you know, we are used to the UK system. Because it is, you know, our former master, all our students are there, you know, our lecturers, they go there for their studies. So we are more, you know, um, exposed to the UK system. While really in the actual sense, the American system, one, if you check world ranking, they have the best schools. And now even here, you know, the trend is a bit changing because initially we only send our, you know, the, the, the government sponsorship is to the UK universities. But now they will say to the TED fund, they will say best 100 universities. And the best 100 may be populated maybe more than 80% by American universities. And that goes to tell you that there is like a shift in awareness and realizing that the American system is really the best for us. And currently, just like I'm mentioning, now that uh, we introduced there is coursework at PhD level, which is the American system. A UK system, there is no coursework at PhD level. You only do research, which was what we used to do before. But in architecture, ever, you know, they have been doing coursework at PhD level for two years. Since. Not now, but it is now that like, you know, the university is trying to introduce this, which is the American. So we are like realizing the importance or the supremacy of the American system, and we are trying to go that way. But the only thing I hope, again, we will also go is the relationship, you know, the streamlining of our relationship with the students, because that has a lot of impact on the student's performance, yeah. on the student performance. Some students, yes, they were withdrawn because they cannot come. But, but some were withdrawn because they don't have adequate advice. 
They only go to their academic advisor when they want to sign form. While their academic advisor follows your progress, your test scores, he goes to the lecturer, if you miss a test, he finds out, is there any possibility for you to get a makeup? What is your performance? He sits down with you, encourages you to do better, and then your performance will improve. But our academic advising is, too, is nothing to write home about. And that will lead to a lot of people being withdrawn. So a lot of things, then about the journal presence, the online journal, I know the former vice chancellor mandated all faculty journals to, you know, make it online, that they will sponsor making all faculty journals online. And I think they started, because now in the website there is that of pharmacy, I think, pharmaceutical sciences, I think their journals, their issues are online. Because if, is online. Okay. So, because if journal is not online, it doesn't have online, online uh, presence, then maybe nobody will even see it. And the impact will not be there. And one of the cardinal objectives of writing an article is to impact on the knowledge of that area. If, your knowledge, if nobody cited your article, it means nobody has used it. Then it is useless. And you see, that reminds that he's got pressing what I keep saying those I'm supervising. Each time I'm giving them correction and they from their face, I said, I don't blow it here. Remember, your work is going onto the internet. Yes. <laughs> I always yeah. remember your work is going yeah. onto the internet. Yeah. I can't imagine myself mm. spending several years mm. supervising mm. a student or several months mm. and then not, not, not that work being uploaded into mm. the internet. Yeah. I, I can't do that. So everything has to be near at yes. yes. Everything has to otherwise yeah. I'm not going to sign it. Yeah. I mean it. Yeah. Otherwise why waste my time? Mm. And waste your time. Waste university's resources. Mm. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Thank you so much. Yeah, welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, just a tomorrow. Yeah, much. Yeah. Uh, so much. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. okay. So we didn't get any now. Examination. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, environmental. No. Okay. To she can. Inshallah. All right. We will see. We will see. Okay. <laughs> So right. let's have one more with okay. the song. Okay. All right. Okay. Please, sorry, sir. Okay. okay. Oh.